Welcome, travelers. We oh. are about to embark on an exciting journey. To start, press start. Uh, have we met this gentleman before, Nile? I think so. I don't have. Um... I have my control right here. Let me go. Oh, ahead. do you? Okay, Let me press just... it for us. Boop. You have started the adventuring journey part two. Awesome. I've been waiting for this, dude. I've been excited. I can't believe they shadow dropped this on. <laughs> yes, to start, please oh. enter your names. <laughs> Okay, well, Ooh. TRD, as always. Uh, I think I'm going to switch it up this time. I'm going to call myself Johnny. You have chosen TRD and Johnny. You can call me Turd if you want, game. I do not want to do that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Please, now pick your race. You can be the elegant elf, the noble dwarf, or half-man half smaller man <laughs> i think i want to do the half man half smaller man because i've never been small you know i've been so big though sure whole, whole Johnny whole has life. chosen <laughs> half <laughs> man <laughs> half smaller man then i guess i'll go with elegant elf my my close second you have chosen the elegant elf now pick your adventuring class you can be the true fighter the true wizard or the false cleric <laughs> I cannot I feel like I'm a false cleric I feel like I'm a true fighter my name is Johnny and I'm a half man half smaller man <laughs> I feel like I'm a true fighter which half is smaller the, the left worst half, half. <laughs> the top half you have chosen the false cleric and the true fighter but now, you must choose your mark. Every great adventurer has an enemy. Pick wow. your monster. Mm. You can slay the mighty giant in Cloud City, the subtle mind flare in the Underdark, or the god of death, Bronson. <laughs> Ooh, I kind of like Bronson, actually. I'm not going to lie. God of Death is intimidating, but I think I'm going for him. I like Bronson. Can we? Do we both pick the same mark, or do we? You do. Hey, Bronson, yeah, Bronson. It is oh, unanimous. Yeah. You have chosen the God of Death, which means you have chosen death. Oh. You oh. both die. Oh, <laughs> great. Just for him being our mark? Just for choosing to go after him. Do we you... get one reset? Yes, uh, of course. You get one free life. <laughs> um, after this one, though, you will have to pay for more lives by Venmoing Jared ten dollars. Yeah, right. I, we better you make know this the drill. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I can handle that right now. Uh, yeah, we just had a big discussion before we started recording about the economy. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so we'll step back. What are our options again? You can choose the mighty giant in Cloud City or the subtle mind flare in the Underdark. I think mighty giant in Cloud City sounds pretty magical. I, uh, I'll agree. I'll do it. All right. Tight. You have chosen the mighty giant in Cloud City. But to go, you may need a little more help than just the two of you. Ooh, Let's go. companion time. Pick your minion. You can choose the goblin who doesn't speak the common tongue. <laughs> the tyrant Borthor Greathammer. Or 50 bees. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like there's one that's that's pretty top heavy on helping us in there. <laughs> I feel like this one. Please, please make answer. your decision. <laughs> Dude, the bees are going to sting us to death, and then we're not going to be able to get to go. Kill us. Don't be helpful. All right, all right. Then 50 bees. 50 we'll pick. Bees. We you bees. have chosen 50 bees. <laughs> Unfortunately, both yeah. of your characters are allergic to bees. <laughs> no, we didn't have And you get access stung to that and dead. Before this choice, yeah, to get another life, please mm. Venmo Jared ten dollars. All right, I'm not doing it. it. All right, yeah, it's your turn. I did it last time. <laughs> All right, this better be worth it. Ten. 
Uh, nine. Oh no, he's got the eight, countdown. Seven. You do it? Six. <laughs> five. <laughs> four. It's coming, it's coming, three, please. Oh. It's going. All right. Congratulations, you have <laughs> gotten one more life. Thank you. Please Lucas. choose wisely. You can choose the goblin who doesn't speak the common tongue or the tyrant Borthor Greathammer. Can we choose 50 bees again? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. You remember oh. now you are allergic. <laughs> okay, great. Okay. Let's um, do, um, I'm kind of feeling voice. like the tyrant will kill us. No, the dude, goblin the tyrant will just is not gonna be helpful. The tyrant's totally going to help. All right, let's do the tyrant then. I'm convinced. You have right. chosen. I've lost my voice. Oh, <laughs> you've different. chosen the tyrant <laughs> Borth or Great Hammer. A little bit different there, but you do not run. Choose <laughs> now. Now Choose. you can finally step out onto your journey. Oh, Choose yes. your path into the city, into the trees, or through the mountains. Mm -hmm. All sound fine, but. That must not be the case. I, it, there's no way. All, all of these questions, at least one, leads to just immediate death. I'm, <laughs> I'm certain. So, city, city. I say we do the city. You have chosen to stay with your people, and enter the city. Oh. As you go through, you find the highest wizard's tower and Ooh. begin to ascend its staircase into the clouds. Once you get there, all hope seems lost until a huge sword cuts through the sky. The mighty giant in Cloud City begins his assault. Do you fight, run, or pray? Ooh. I remember praying not going well <laughs> last time, I think. But we you're the you're the cleric this time, right? Well, yes, but the, the false, false cleric. I don't. <laughs> I, I might just be a guy. <laughs> All right. Um, well, who's I allergic think, to bees? Who's allergic to um, bees? We have that one piece of backstory that we, yeah. we share. Um, <laughs> let's 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 fight. We're gonna fight. Because if we run, then what's the point? If we fight. You have chosen fight to also. stand your ground. And as you fight, the tyrant Borthor Great Hammer stands by your side. You cut this foe down where he stood. Nice. You have defeated the giant in Cloud City. Nice. Now that now you've I'm, slain I'm gonna, him. Oh, I just wanted to say real quick, I'm just gonna pretend that I'm praying. <laughs> you find- you're false cleric, so you're not actually <laughs> praying. I'm you gonna find. make it look like I know what I'm doing. <laughs> You find no god here. Okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> here being your body and soul. <laughs> Not the now, city. You have killed the mighty giant and standing in be, well behind where he was, uh there is a a beautiful princess. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Do you what set her point? free from Cloud City? Do you kill her? Or do you marry her? Ooh. Do we both get to marry her? Or I only think one? you get to marry her and I kill her. I think that she's the real power behind the giant. Is she a bee queen or is she a regular person? With further inspection, you do <laughs> see she is made of bees. <laughs> see, yeah. Dang you gotta, it. You gotta make sure you're checking those Okay, things. I'm glad I checked that out. When we you're, her, when that you're someone out. that's allergic to bees... You gotta make sure that what you're marrying is not bees. <laughs> what were the odds? That's rule number Kill one. Her, marry her or what? Or set her free. We'll set her free. I, well, yeah, we'll set her free, I guess. Hope you you have chosen to set the princess of bees free. As, <laughs> as a bad city. She's just gonna sting us, man. <laughs> she is 50 bees. <laughs> she might be more. As she is set free. <laughs> She approaches TRD. I will not sting you. Oh, oh, what a voice. But I will ask that you pray to me. Oh. The princess of bees. Become my true cleric. Listen, I don't... Oh, 
will I be a true cleric? Only one way to find out. Ooh, very I'm nice. gonna turn her down. I'm oh. I'm dug into my false cleric ways. I know who I am. You have chosen to turn down the Queen of Bees. Yeah, and I'm not gonna make all these life changes for some lady I just met. Which means you have chosen death. <laughs> no! Oh, no! I thought this was gonna be a story of self-actualization. <laughs> no, no, no. Not for the false cleric, clearly. <laughs> Find out the thrilling next, on the thrilling next part of this adventuring journey yeah. what happens <laughs> <laughs> wait was this a continuation of the last one no <laughs> oh great but the All last right. one did end in the same way <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Man Cave Movie Night, the only Hello. podcast where we are all allergic to bees. The only yeah. one. The only you know, podcast where there are We've three hosts all allergic to bees. One hundred percent of us. Um, yeah, welcome back. We are excited to talk about the you know the age old classic game Dungeons and Dragons today. Hello. Um, I know we've all had some experience with Dungeons and Dragons, and we'll kind of dive into that a little bit. Um, I actually don't know what the questions are, so <laughs> I'm not a horrible they, person they, they to host pretty, this. <laughs> um, but yeah, the new Dungeons and Dragons movie, just to preface, uh, Honor Among Thieves has uh, not come out yet, but because we are podcasters and we have <laughs> such a strong following... We yeah. were given early access to see it in theaters. Along with everyone else who Along... happens to be in the theater at the same Along... time. <laughs> yes. Along with anyone who has an Amazon Prime subscription. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, well, they reached out to us because of the podcast. That's that not is... true, but it would have been cool if they did. Listen, it Lucas, been way cool. we can, we're supposed to lie to the audience. We're That's among the what... top 5%. That is not a lie. <laughs> well, when I got my tickets, it all, it did offer me like ten free meals off of HelloFresh. So <laughs> oh, I think hey, maybe that nice. is a sponsorship. That's pretty cool. Huh? Yeah, we're that's, actually, Hello Fresh. that's a promotional thing. Yeah, yeah. I think that it, it's too. probably like a with a year subscription, you can yeah. get sixteen ten free meals or something like that. <laughs> Blood <laughs> sacrifice. Yeah. So I turned them down. Good. You know. Uh, and but I still went and saw the movie and so did you guys and so we will be talking about that but at the very end of the podcast because it doesn't come out free. for another two and a half no two, two weeks or so it's like yeah, a two weeks. yeah week and a half to two weeks to two Something and a half like weeks <laughs> as of yeah. recording two weeks two we'll weeks say. before <laughs> <laughs> yeah more or less basically we're two weeks better than you is what we're trying to say yeah, yeah. one thing that's been a common theme in a lot of our episodes is we talk about dnd quite a bit yeah. um like it comes up pretty often just we love the game we love how it operates we've all played at least a decent amount um yeah i mean i right before we started recording this i was wrapping up a dungeons and dragons game that i run every week and so you know it's pretty pretty close to our hearts and we felt like we wanted to do a full episode basically just dedicated to the game and and talk about how much it means to us and you know just kind of do our normal format of a couple fun questions plus the added bonus of getting to chat about the movie you know for the first time so true Ooh. Yeah. um i want to Any... i want to preface uh my experience with it i've been playing D D for i think like two-ish years maybe a little bit more than that yeah. Um and I That's I it. You didn't play it all before 2 years? No. That's crazy, it's, bro. It's I mean, very... we played in high school like RPGs like that fake, were yeah. loose it was, loose yeah. rules. I mean, still role-playing games, but not 
not, not the D&D. edition yeah, yeah or, it was it was someone it. who heard about D D from a friend and then told their friend and then that told friend <laughs> told a friend and then uh-huh. told us and we and made the... that version of D. <laughs> yeah <laughs> which That's and it right. was a great time um with you know theater friends it's basically just an opportunity for us to kind of make up a story together so it was fun in high school yeah um but boy oh boy do i just crave rules <laughs> in my life and and D D gave that to me it yeah put rules to just kind of the entropy that was our version of rpg <laughs> yeah really it was like roll a 20-sided dice and if you got over a 10 you succeeded and if you got under a 10 you failed so i mean there's really no yeah. difference than just using a d6 or flipping yeah. a coin, truly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. But it's more fun because D20s but, are like, yeah, yeah, it's more fun. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, it's an RPG. Um, yeah. But I I remember when I started playing, thinking, I wish that I had been into this my entire life. Mm. Like I I felt like looking back, I had been missing out by not being into it sooner. And yeah. I like when we did the first RPG in high school, and of course high school is when you're trying to be cool and you're not necessarily trying to be yourself. Um, sure. I I was like, no, that's like dumb and well, nerdy, but I'll like, I guess I'll do it, you know? And then I just had so <laughs> much fun. Yeah. And so like, I, I don't know. I just, I know that there's kind of like a barrier to entry for a lot of people that is, it's D and that's what nerds do. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, I mean, becoming less and less of yeah. the, the stigma around thanks it. To, thanks to Stranger Things. And I, I hope the movie also kind of opens yeah. the door for more people to be Definitely. like, oh, is this what the stories are like in yeah. D&D? Like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. then I want to do that because the movie <laughs> was fun, you know? The movie was like very fun, yeah. And so I just like, it's so much fun and anybody can have fun doing it you know Mm -hmm. um like if you just find your people to be able to do it with and so for sure i just like i i can really see myself at least attempting to be playing D &D for for many many years going forward because it's so much fun and it doesn't like run out you know right Uh uh-huh so funny story with the whole you know D D is for extreme nerds which to an extent honestly is kind of true. Well, I will I think say D&D is super accessible. now for extreme nerds. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like yeah. Warhammer 40k. Yeah, well, freaking exactly. dweebs. <laughs> um, but I was at a friend of mine's house who lives with like 15 roommates. And so there's just a ton of people there. We watched a movie, watched Blade Runner 2049 together, Nerd which was fun. Sweet. And then after the movie ended, just kind of more and more people were coming over just because that happens at that place because there's so many roommates. And so one of his roommates, I was just talking to him. And he had this like girl he was with and I w- I hadn't talked to this girl and I was just talking to him and I was like, somehow D&D came up and I was like, dude, yeah, honestly, I love d d it's, it's a ton of fun. If you guys ever wanted to be playing, like play, I would be totally down to like run a session or whatever if you've never done it before. And this girl, like who I had not been interacting, just like was giving me the weirdest looks as soon as Ugh. I started talking about D&D and I'm just like, you know what? I'm probably never going to see you again in my life. So I don't really care what you <laughs> sure. think about me. Might as well. I love d and that's just, you know, that's just how it is. Um, but yeah, I also love D&D. I have like always just played casually. Like I've only been a dungeon master once and I had a ton of fun with it. It's just something I like to do with my friends, whether it would be you guys or this group of friends of mine from high school or other people I've done it with. It's just like such a fun game to be able to dive into. Um, I will say like who you play it with does greatly affect um, how much fun you have with it. Because yeah. if they're not as into it as you are, it just kills the vibe because a lot of it is like role playing kind of. Yeah. And so you kind of have to be silly and goofy and maybe a little bit out of your comfort zone and maybe see people getting out of their comfort zone, but it's fun. That's like part of what makes yeah. it so different and unique. And I think why it's getting more and more popular um, again, yeah. like it was before. So yeah, I, I love it. It's a ton of fun. I don't know the most, m- most about it, especially not compared to Nile and Jared, they know a ton, um, but I've read the, you know, the um, handbook, and I like to play it. It's just a fun game to play. It's just yeah. very, very fun. Yeah. Well, and it's it, like on that, just real quick interjection before Jared goes off. Um, <laughs> and that is sure. that I think it, it's one of those games that really is, it's as good as your friends are. 
Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. <laughs> right? Like For sure. if you're playing with either friends that don't care or friends that care a lot, but in a different direction mm-hmm. than you or strangers. Yeah. yeah or strangers. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, that's the thing that people do. I don't know if I'd be able to handle it. No, no, um, I, I have, I've done it. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> That, that gives me the heaps, but um, <laughs> I just like, I, I know there are some people that like want to play and just like, be like way, way into it and take it very, very seriously. And it's like, if they find their group that's that wants to play it that way, then I know they're going to have a blast. And there are also people that just don't want to take it seriously at all. And they just kind of want to mess around and, and see like the dumbest possible thing that they can do. And if they're with a group, that's like, that's what you're angling for, then you're going to have a great time. But like, it really is you have to kind of be on the same page mm-hmm. as everyone which is kind of a unique thing there are a lot of games where like that kind of mindset doesn't necessarily affect like the rules of the game or or how the game is played for other people mm-hmm, but right. this game very much is like you're all kind of collaborating on really the rule set of the game yeah. to a degree and so it's, and it's truly what happens like if you were like yeah. hey you walk into a bar and you're like, I'm, I kill the barkeeper or like I, I plunge my sword into his chest. Then it's like, OK, well, well, you know, we're doing gonna this give you a okay. quest yep. and like you can do that technically, but it's I'm not, not going to be good or no. fun for anyone else. <laughs> but yeah. I am going to punish you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I guess I'll, I'll kind of give my background. I started playing D&D a, around the time fifth edition came out, which is the current edition. Um is which was about 2014 so when i was in junior high my brother and i got the starter set and my dad really bought into the satanic panic thing he didn't know anything about the game so he was just like yeah that's it's like addicting and it's gonna you know like you're gonna be so like desensitized to violence and satan and you know all this stuff and i was like so all so true we, to be fair all very true i'm super yeah. desensitized to satan and it's pretty addicting <laughs> <For> <laughs> it's just fun it's like <laughs> it's a way i enjoy spending my time which is if you call that addicting sure you know yeah but yeah, anything you like <laughs> doing that doesn't work is an addiction <laughs> yeah exactly and so i mean we'd heard about it we were pretty intrigued and on one of our excursions to the local game store uh in our hometown where we used to go like every other weekend and spend all of our money on Pokemon cards. <laughs> uh, we, you know, just this guy introduced us. Hey, like, like uh, the starter set just came out. If you're interested, you can get like this, you know, easy, you know, to pick up and, and get playing. And the game store also provided like someone who would just DM games for people. So That's so cool of them to do. Was yeah. it Hajimaji? It was. Yeah. Oh, nice. So That's back so in the day. Cool. Was it Jason, the guy with the big beard? Um, it wasn't him who the DM'd owner, us. But... Yeah, but he was the one who who put us in contact with him. Nice, yeah. nice. And so yeah, we found a guy every Wednesday we'd go and he showed us the ropes and we played through that starter adventure. So that was my first experience playing. And it was awesome, right? Like there was one guy in our group who was kind of annoying. Let's be honest, but that's how it goes, bro. Like, other than that, truly, like, we got hooked. We started playing, like, in our basement with some neighborhood friends, you know, and we never get super far into a story because we were, you know, also like we were kids, you know, with yeah, no discipline yeah. to keep a There's schedule. A lot of other stuff you want <laughs> yeah, to do. A lot yeah. of other stuff. But we, yeah, we kept that box uh, and we, just would hide it under our beds and stuff so our dad wouldn't find it oh nice so, <laughs> you, so you snuck it like you, yeah it we snuck it it was oh, it was a nice, secret nice. in our house that we played that's crazy and, and we would you know have it all out while my dad was at work and then we'd hear him get home and we'd be like oh put the, put the map away put you know erase the dry erase Dang. board and everything uh so it was very fun and then in high school yeah i played some rpgs we kind of fell off D for a little while and in college I finally got like a group back together uh, when my brother, same, same guy, uh, we were going to the same college for about a year overlapping. And he was like, Hey man, like, I'd really like to get a group together. And so I just asked a couple of my friends, we got a group together, 
played an awesome campaign. My brother moved away. We got a new DM to take over. And like that campaign went for about a year or so. We love the characters. You know, we like it was the first time actually playing week to week pretty much. And Uh and we had these character deaths that like made people cry. And it was so moving. And I was like, I need to take this torch and just share this game with as many people as I can. And so I started like student I was I was part of some student organizations and I started smaller groups you know with uh people from across our college campus and just started slowly introducing people to the game started watching shows like Critical Role Dimension 20 The Adventure Zone hmm. uh refined my skills as a DM and basically since I was about 3 or 4 years ago I've I've played weekly uh one if not two games a week uh, I, I had a time where I played three games a week as either a DM or player. And At that, that was, point, it gets draining. That's a lot of That was a bit much. But it, it was like very, very different. It was like a I was DMing my own game, which is its own beast. Uh, right. yeah. But then I was playing in like a pirate campaign, which was really Ooh, fun. fun. And I was playing in Curse of Strahd, which is like a horror, very, fun. very different game. And yeah. so they and all of my characters were very different and and so I was able to get like different experiences out of all of them. But I know I've been rambling, but no. just to kind of say this has been a part of my life for a long time. Yeah. Um, and it's I've slowly started to see like. I don't know, people being changed by the game, mm-hmm. like one of my roommates because of the satanic panic because of <laughs> becoming because, because becoming more like yeah. unto right. Beelzebub, our lord and savior <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah i mean i just walk into friends houses and they've got all their crosses turned upside down and yeah. i'm just like man i'm home and they're just like <laughs> jared <laughs> yeah get out this is your brain like, on oh, dungeons and dragons <laughs> it's like a paragon <laughs> <laughs> yeah you guys know you guys know yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, and I'll I'll just say this, that I truly believe, uh, you know, like with such a conviction that I don't feel about almost anything else, everyone should play Dungeons and Dragons at least once. Yep. And and I say that obviously, like I've played with groups who are like the D&D club. That one was fun just because my brother and I, again, we've always like he's DM'd for me or I've DM'd for him, but we've never really had the chance to be players together at that point. Nice. Right. And so we we went and we made like brother dragonborn characters, you know, one who was like lawful good and the other one who was like lawful evil. Nice. And which is nice. really, really cool and fun. And we did like a short dungeon with them and then we were like, these guys are kind of weird. <laughs> so <Yeah>. we left. <laughs> but yeah, everyone should play once. Um, you know, and I think you get a lot out of it, especially if you play with friends. So nice. yeah. that's my two Sweet. cents. And actually, yeah. I mean, that was more like a dollar. That was my dollar. Yeah, on it. sure. <laughs> hey, yeah, dude, we, we'll take we'll take a dime even. Yeah, but we'll take a dollar, we'll take it a dime. was like, I do think that it's one of those games that everybody should play. Yeah. But also, if you're going to play, like Lucas said earlier, give yourself to it, like allow yourself to really actually play it. Because I like, I don't mean to sound like gatekeepy now when I say <laughs> sure. this. Uh oh. Like, there, there are a couple of people in alert. my band who have kind of like made fun of it a bunch. Uh-huh. But then, like, later in the conversation, been like, no, 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 but really, we should play it. And right, I'm like, like, no. I'm like, I'll play. I'll yeah. run a camp, like, I'll run a one shot for you if you promise to not be the way that you've been about it up until now (laughs) you know because it's not going to be fun for my other friends in the band who do enjoy it that are going to want to have it be an actual game you know there there, i will say there's like a a weird like fine line because you want to have fun with it but like because it is silly it's very silly thing to be doing and so when I when I say like take yourself seriously, and I think Jared and I will agree with this as well, is it's like take just the silliness seriously. Like just mm-hmm. accept that it's mm-hmm. weird and that it's just like a fun, silly, dumb game, yeah. and then just have fun with it and just make fun of stuff like with that. Don't be like, 
oh my gosh like an rpg where you're pretending to be like a wizard Blah, so lame <laughs> like yeah. that's not sure. fun that's like cool yeah we get it that it's weird like we all get Move that that's it. why we're yeah. here we're past that now let's make fun of like you know fighting <laughs> whatever just having fun yeah. in the group not just the fact that you're doing it otherwise yeah just don't play it just do something else well, I'll so, add kind of based on my experience of playing with so many different groups. Yeah. It's super important that you find like just the tone, right? If, you, if yeah. you're playing with your friends, you all probably have pretty similar, you know, right. I just maybe just jokes, expectations, you know, uh, and if you feel comfortable with your group, it's easy to say, no, we're going for a very serious horror right. tone. Yeah. Like, and if you That's guys true. are comfortable yeah. playing into that, it just enhances the experience. Mm -hmm. If right. you're playing, no, like the wizard who gives you your quest, his name's Bobo, you know, and, he, <laughs> and he's uh, made of bees. He's made of bees. <laughs> then that's the game. And it's, right. there's yeah. no wrong way or right way yeah. to just as you long know, as you're play. all on the same page. Exactly. Yeah. yeah that, that's a good clarification. For sure. all, um, of, all of the books kind of have some sort of disclaimer that, Hey, these rules are for reference, but if you yeah. guys are having fun, that's what matters. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so one of the things about D&D &D that I really enjoy is just the variety of like who you can be as as your own character, right? Yeah. And despite that variety, I feel always compelled to want to be the exact same thing every time. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. Um just cuz I'm like I'm drawn to I, I've found that I'm like this, and I think a lot of people are like this, with when it comes to whatever, like D D or D D adjacent things like mm -hmm. Skyrim, for yeah. example, which kind of takes a lot from the D D setup. I like I just kind of always want to do it a certain way, play a certain race, play a certain class, that yeah. kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. So like I'm interested to find out if like that's just a me thing or if you guys have like certain like i guess archetypes that you are grab that you gravitate towards or just like races and classes that you find interesting and then of course explain what they are a little bit for a listener who might not know yeah i mean i've i've always liked elves just in stuff just playing yeah. as elves and just that idea and so my first skyrim Keebler, campaign, you know like the yeah, toy making Keebler variety elves, like is the the cobbler elves. elves you know just stuff like that i've just yeah, always really awesome. found myself attracted to that um <laughs> No, mostly it's from Lord of the Rings, just the I, yeah. like the Elrond and, you know, Legolas, all those types of elf societies. But um, so I like to play as elves. I, I don't even there's not really a huge benefit of playing as an elf in D&D, &D, but it's just like, you know, but and there's especially not Better a benefit of you. playing as a D, uh, wow. as an elf in Skyrim. But that's Very who human. I was like. I was a high elf in Skyrim when I started. I was like, oh, nice. High elf. That sounds awesome. And yeah. It just was not how I wanted to play Skyrim because I like to play sneak. Mm. That's a whole different thing. Right. But um, <laughs> with, yeah, just the whole. Well, yeah, thing, I mean, I, I like role, to do. role playing is is a, if you're playing Skyrim as a role player, I, it's also very yeah. different, you know? Yeah. And I did not play Skyrim. <laughs> sure. Yeah. But um, elf, um, elves and like rangers and just like stuff with bow and arrows, all that type of stuff. Of nice. But then at the same time, like wizard stuff is cool too. And so yeah, yeah, it depends on something in those in that realm. You can even be an elf wizard too in D and D, which is cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, That's true. So I'll say, uh, kind of my my characters, the ones I have the most fun with, are the ones I can kind of just play high charisma, really. I love interacting mm. with the world and I love changing the world. And I know mm. this is very different from Skyrim, right? Or like more of a video game because in D and D you can, again, go up and, you know, shank the bartender, uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which you can do that too. It depends on where I suppose Skyrim. you can do that in Skyrim yeah. as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I like to play a very charismatic hero, like a bard or a rogue uh, or like a, I've played many paladins. Um, or these are the ones I have the most fun with, I'll say. Sure. Um, someone very charismatic who is somewhat of a reluctant hero, right? Okay. Like uh yeah. they they do the right thing because they know it's the right thing to do, but they're also like Ugh. like they say they're in it for themselves, but really they like they're very idealist. Yeah, the, well, yeah, they're like well, I'm only doing this for the coin, you know, like I'm oh, only I doing see. this because but of not, this. Uh, but like when it comes yeah. down to it, they'll 
sacrifice the coin to save someone you know right. man if only there was a character like that in the DD movie <laughs> <laughs> no there there was a moment in the movie obviously no spoilers but i just laughed out loud because of how much it reminded me of one of my characters oh, was, <laughs> was, was like, that damien so awesome. lark damien lark yeah nice yeah my, <laughs> i had a pirate swashbuckler character who yeah just was a rogue and just I think I, but... I think I know the exact moment. I'm gonna, yeah, yep, <laughs> yeah, that yeah, was yeah. What I was yeah. gonna say. <laughs> Could, that's so can't funny. Can't help it. Can't help it. So. That's so funny. Yeah, that's um, fine. I have found, uh, Jared. I don't know if you'll be surprised by this, based on our like any time we've tried to make music. Mm-hmm. Um, I think these kind of reflect a little bit because Jared <laughs> always kind of writes these really like happy. I guess charismatic songs. Sure. And I always write a song about like a guy who ends up going crazy and dying because <laughs> of it. And things like that. And for some reason that's the way that my creativity is expressed. Yeah, I'm and a Shakespearean it, comedy, you're a Shakespearean tragedy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and in um D D it's been no different for me where I'm always kind of drawn to a little more like dark and moody brooding type characters i the the first character that i ever thought of to create who i've actually still never played um was a half elf rogue and both of those just like call to me so much because i feedless is uh no he was a dark elf oh you're right you're right I know everything, Lucas. <laughs> you um, know everything. That's Feetless very is true. scarred in my brain. Yeah, I might even have idea. like a lobotomy to get that out. <laughs> um, but I play, well, I, I just had this idea for a character mm-hmm. who like, when I was going through the player's handbook for the very first time, Half Elf immediately called to me because of like the kind of outcast angle that it has written in. Like they're yeah. not really fully accepted by either the human community or the elf community, it, which is the kind of recommended backstory in the book. Of course, you can change whatever you want. Yeah. Um, but that's kind of like the description of the race in the book. And then rogues, I have always just been so fascinated with like sneaky type characters and like like killing them with daggers and just being like being deadly just because you're so like fast and and you can just like disappear i i think that that stuff is super interesting so rogues have always really called to me which also i've i think i've only kind of played a rogue once and was out after like five sessions uh he died (laughs) and so it was just like i it's interesting because the ones that I'm the most naturally drawn to are also the ones that I kind of haven't really been ever. <laughs> sure. I don't think I've ever played a half elf. No, um, you've played a couple sorcerers. You've played, but a... yeah, I've I've played some sorcerers yeah, and like fighter, I've kind of done some kind adjacent stuff, type things, martial things. Yeah. I love. I I don't know why, but I'm drawn to the the moody. <laughs> the the moody like rogue type character yeah you know? basically um uh vax from critical role the first campaign he yeah. is like that's the, like the my, show the legend of vox machina yeah, or the legend of vox machina he is like kind of the character that my brain immediately is like well i want to be something like that you know <laughs> yeah like i'm always kind of interested in the more serious angle of D hmm yeah, I'm not at all. I'm always chaotic <laughs> evil. I chaotic <laughs> evil. You every time, every time I play, be. I I love and and so I had never I had never DM'd before until last year. I played a a campaign. We did the starter set actually campaign the, nice. the I Spire Peak, yeah. which was a ton of fun and it was very fun being a DM because in before you DM your first time, it's like, Oh man, I need to do all this prep and whatever. You need to make it perfect. And honestly, it ends up not at all going the way you plan. You just have to be good on your feet, try and be funny and have some fun with it. And that's exactly what it was. And I was like, you know what, this is, this is good stuff. And Ian, my roommate and I were talking about it the other day and there was some stuff I'd forgotten. that was just so silly and fun that we had done that um, is good. And so with that, I'm going to lead in my question, which is yeah. what's a, what's a great, and fun experience or just story you have from playing D D that you would like to share well i'll preface this i, I think niall should go first still but i want to say 
we I understand sharing your D&D games is like sharing <laughs> your dream where nobody cares. Yeah. Nobody, wants <laughs> nobody cares. It. Nobody wants to hear it. You're like, dude, yeah. I had a dream last night that I got in a fight, a fist fight with a deer, <laughs> which is an actual dream that I had like a week ago. That dude, pretty cool. that's pretty relevant. <laughs> Yeah, don't pretend to care. I don't. I, 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 yeah, I so you know nobody cares. Helpful. That was a fun. You're only whatever. saying that because we're on a podcast. But um, yeah, know, so right. we're going to preface that. But I actually care about sure. these are just examples, I guess, of the <laughs> awesome, just like memories and stories that you have. Like there are moments you can think back on like campaign. Like I've played so many campaigns at this point that I'm like, dude, I still. Oh, guys, do you remember? when your character did that thing and just like this huge moment happened yeah it's like truly you're living through stories vicariously <laughs> through your characters that yeah. are so so impactful and and you like you feel like you lived those uh, in a way because you built those stories together right yeah. and so i that's just one thing like yeah if you have a good friend group and you're able to play you're going to make memories like regardless that will yeah. probably last you forever. Well, and they, yeah, they, they live in your memory with your friend group as things that me and my friends did yeah. not like things that our characters did, but like you look back on them and you remember the way that you imagine it. It's, it's yeah. really kind of magical. Yeah. I have two that I'm going to share. They're both very brief and quick. Yeah. Lucas, I know Lucas just did a hand flourish for the listeners i know that sounded really <laughs> cheesy and blah 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 but it's true um imagination <laughs> imagination um the first one this was the first moment that i really kind of realized the extent that D D can just really kind of flip you over and, <laughs> and you don't know what's going on and that is in my first campaign um which was Jared and I playing and we were the mm -hmm. only players and it was Jared's brother, Jacob. Shout out, Jacob. Shout out, uh, Jacob. Yeah. How did we get who, yeah, 40 minutes in without in shouting out your brother multiple times? I should just say his name, Jacob. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I'm trying to keep him anonymous. Super, super, super. <laughs> we um we were going through, I, I, I can't remember if it was like a dungeon or maybe mm -hmm. some kind of crypt or something like that. Um but I like we had solved some riddles to get to a certain point in this place. I he was you were playing a tiefling um bard named Notley Bonham, and I was playing Gideon Greaves, um, the the dwarf fighter, because yeah. it was basically gonna be the easiest class to play, and I didn't want to <laughs> learn any rules. Yeah, dwarf champion fighter. You yeah, got it easy <laughs> yeah. Enough. and it was very fun. Yeah. But I my character turned around and there were two of you. <laughs> and both were like claiming to be the real you at which mm -hmm. point jacob took you into the other room uh -huh. to have a secret conversation and then come back and both of you were being your character <laughs> yeah. i had to figure out which one of you was the actual you and which one of you was um a what doppelganger was a, uh, yeah revealed to be a doppelganger yeah which can like kind of you know take the form of other things and i just remember being so affected by that <laughs> like that there were two of you and now both of you are like playing against me and i just have to figure this out by myself <laughs> and it was like it was so crazy and i remember like after that session for the rest of the day just being like and stuff like that just happen whenever <laughs> like that was crazy yeah and i like it stressed me out so much but it was so exciting you know and so uh, that was the first one and then second most memorable thing for me uh was probably it was a session that i played as a guest character in um one of jared's campaigns that he was running mm -hmm. i played a um a bard a halfling bard named Quan chang yeah um who was named after an uber eats driver that i had um <laughs> so great. i just remember seeing him and like we i uh, he was a cool dude we talked for a little bit but <laughs> while well, this one you played a half <laughs> man half smaller man i played a half man half smaller man yeah halfling you basically just take a man you just take a Hobbit. man and you just go Whoop. yeah yeah and um it was it was really fun to play with basically mostly people that I didn't know 
-hmm. but with a DM that I knew and with a group that I knew, well, my friend trusts them with D and D so I can just go in head first also trusting them with D and D. And I just like, it was really my first time playing like a really like charisma driven (laughs) character and like doing all of the bard stuff and just being yeah. able to like kind of really let loose with that and like Ugh. saying puns to cast spells and things like that yeah. was just so much fun. And then it also turned out to be like one of the most intense combats that had ever like kind of this huge game changing combat yeah. um, for the rest of the party, which was like it was really fun to be involved in this session where everybody else cared so much about all of the context that had led them to this point that it made me who didn't really know anything else that was going on also feel like, okay, this is the most important thing, even though I had no personal stake in it whatsoever. Like, okay, if my character dies, who cares? If my character lives, who cares? Cause I'm just here for this one session, you know? Um, And it was, it was just one of those things where it was like, that night what we were doing was real that wasn't in our imaginations that was an actual fight that we were (laughs) all in we were around the table just full screaming about things that were going on it was amazing yeah well and i'll 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 piggyback off that because that's definitely my biggest and probably proudest moment as a dm um to to put into a little bit of context D &D does take a little bit of time yeah um so each session that we play is around three hours, as far as the ones I DM and play in, around three hours weekly. Um, and at that point, we were probably about 25 sessions in. So again, that's a lot of time. That's like, yeah, that's 75 hours right there that we were, yeah. you know, invested into this game. And that session in particular, I remember we started a, probably about seven o'clock, 7 p.m. And we went till 1 a.m. or yeah. two, like maybe even a little past that. And um, basically they had gone into a dungeon, uh, like a pyramid in the desert. And the final boss was a beholder, which is an iconic D&D monster with a lot of different eye stalks that when an eye looks at you, it does a different, uh, mm. has a different effect. And yeah. all of them are deadly and powerful. And so there was a party of like seven players. So a lot of people around the uh, crowded around this table and every turn, these eyes were like, you know, shooting eye stocks at everyone. (laughs) Um, And there's one that has a, it's like a charm effect. And whenever a character got charmed, they were charmed to pull from this magical deck that the beholder had, uh, which uh, for people who played D&D, it's called the Deck of Many Things. Mm. And this is one of the most chaotic, powerful, magical items that exists. Either you could, you know, be able to cast a wish or, you know, get like a wish to come true, changing the game forever. Or <laughs> you could have your soul ripped out and, <laughs> you know, sent to the, sent to the deepest, darkest yeah. levels of hell, you know? Yeah. And so it was just so many random things going on. And like Niall was saying, like everyone was up standing by the end of the game, just yeah. like freaking out. So and the only, they won on like the last round possible when one of the characters pulled voluntarily, shout out to Keegan, uh, yeah. voluntarily pulled the card from the deck of many things and it was the wish spell and he used Ooh. it to cast a gate to his god he was like a cleric and an angel came out and delivered the final blow as he was turning the stone that's so cool yeah. everyone else in the room was either charmed had already turned to stone or <laughs> were just unconscious <laughs> <laughs> and so by the end of it everyone was out of commission he yeah. turned to stone right out at the end of that turn. And so it was a really, really cool fight. It was crazy. right down to the line and uh, super fun. So, yeah, as far as DMing, that was definitely like the biggest and like favorite part that I've been a part of. As far as as a player, and I know, again, we're taking a long time, but <laughs> like I said before, I love, you know, being a a person who changes the world that they're in while he plays and so in our very first session like Niall 
uh, and some of our high school friends, we started playing with my brother. This is our mm-hmm. first campaign playing together and we've been playing ever since. Yeah. Um, I came up with a character and all of my favorite characters I've come up with like right before the session. Yeah. And I'm like, I'll just figure them out as I play them. But I decided to play like an ASMR, which is like a half angel warlock bounty hunter. <laughs> and uh, in the first session, there's just a like a character that showed up. Jacob knew I was looking for people like for a bounty and I found a guy and we like I just tricked him and we approached him and it all just started going like sideways. Like Jacob <laughs> probably had something planned for us. Yeah. But by the end of that session, we had gotten a bounty and we were delivering him to another city. Yeah. And it was like I I had felt I felt so much autonomy as a player very much and like yeah. agency where I could just control and change the world how I wanted. Mm-hmm. Um and so that was that was just so fun and that whole campaign ended up being just a blast. Yeah, with, it was it was really awesome. Yeah, really cool characters all the way through. Um like Niall said, I know this question's not coming up, but my favorite character I've ever played was Captain Damien Lark, a pirate <laughs> captain. We talked about him a little bit. And so shout out to Jacob and Will who DM'd that campaign because r- amazing memories uh, all, all throughout. That whole campaign is one big memory that I'm just so happy. And that continues to live on. Yeah, well, I've been trying to get a reunion game. Going. oh nice but so, scheduling is the bane of all D D groups yeah that's true especially that's true. A, i have not played a single that's game already of <laughs> with the friend group that i wanted to this year because this year being school year since august yeah because of scheduling it's just so hard it's so partially hard. my own fault um so my uh my story has to do a little bit with like a we did do like a legacy game where we came back and played with this um character that i created cool. um if you're familiar with kind of like my um not gamer tag but just something i like to use is humpback squirrel and so <laughs> this was like my first um time playing D D, and i was like man what what could i use that would like modify it into D D? and so i came up with the name hb squire and so that was the, <laughs> that's, you know, that's great. pretty awesome <laughs> that was the name of my that character so funny. Um, who's a high elf wizard of royal descent and so i had a ton of fun playing this character played him for a few times before leaving on my two-year uh mission and the last um session we did before i left they knew i was leaving so we're like cool we're we're doing this session um and i the deck of many things was in play as we nice. we were actually fighting about hoarder as well and so whoa uh, i didn't yeah. even know that <laughs> yep. that's crazy so i drew from the deck of many things and it was the last thing we did. I was like, all right, because yeah. we defeated it, but it was like behind, left behind was the deck of many things. And so it was like, you can draw a card from it, but only you and only if you want to. And, you know, yeah, being the nice. chaotic, there, there are plenty of weird, dumb things I did with that character that I won't say because they're a little bit too explicit, but um, <laughs> I did draw that from mm-hmm. it and it was the one that sent you to hell. It sent nice. you to just like the deepest, darkest, uh, <laughs> you know, recess of hell. Yeah. And so that was the card I drew. And he's like, that's it. That's the end of the game. And so that was it. And then I left and they all stayed and kept playing. And I just got sent to hell. And then we played a follow up session last year um, where they saved me from hell. And then I became a character and we played. And it was a ton of fun. It was really fun oh, playing that character. Um, but then when I DM'd last year, after like, because like I said, we followed like the. It was my first time DMing and we we followed the guide in the um, starter pack of like, you know, you fight the dragon and then you can go back to the town and that kind of does it. And there's this place in the town where there's like a fairy wishing well or something like that. I don't remember okay. the exact context of it, but basically they had been there before and we'd had fun with it. They gave me a like a, a gold piece and I played a song and then told them their fortune and so we did that where everyone was able to do that around the table. Yeah. And I had two songs that I played for them. And so as soon as we started playing the song, they knew it was either a good fortune or a bad fortune. Nice. And I got up and danced for them. Like I was the fairy. And um, <laughs> that was also, I had like the led strips in my room. And so I had oh, nice. like red or dip, 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 yeah. dip, dip. That's so dope. It, was, uh, it was a lot of fun. 
Doing that's that so anyway. fun. That was like how we ended the campaign too. And then that's that sweet. So yeah. Yeah, cool. I love I love that you on your last because the only reason I put the beholder and deck of many things in that session is because Niall was a guest, honestly. Because uh-huh. I was like, I want to show Niall a good time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he drove all the way down here. You know, he's he's just hanging out for the weekend. Let's throw something crazy at him. And it was crazy. And they almost lost and all died. It was almost a TPK. <laughs> yeah. And it had consequences that rang throughout the rest of the, the game. And so. I've been I've been chasing that ever since. You've been chasing that high, but I, it, it sounds like awesome. the reason they had all that was also because I mean it was your last session. It was like an event thing, yeah. Yeah, it was an yeah. event. So, and to be fair though, I was like, I was like, hey, you should put the deck of many things, and like that wasn't his plan really. Oh, gotcha. But I kept pushing it. I was like, as soon as I found out what that was, I was like, hey, we should like have that be a part of this because he got like a custom made one from Etsy or something. Yeah, and I was like, dude, that's sick. We should use it in a campaign. And he was like, no. that's cool. <laughs> and then that's really cool. he was like, fine. <laughs> no, it's he was not. Like, fine. Breaking. I will only for you and only after we beat this thing. Yeah. Uh, so I put um, it I start putting it in my campaigns once I'm like, well, we can be done any any session yeah. now. <laughs> Let's just have some fun with it. Yeah. Well, it's a I, fun mechanic. I have one more thing because I also recently have been uh doing more DMing uh mm-hmm. stuff. Yeah, you've been great. Um thanks. And um oh <laughs> yeah, it's, there, it's, it's, uh, you're not that good. <laughs> there are few things that are more satisfying than what happened a couple of sessions ago when I kind of introduced this new uh, villain, um, kind of a main villain, and, and he had a conversation with with the party. And during the conversation and after the conversation, mm-hmm. multiple times people like outside of their characters <laughs> were just like, I hate this guy so much. Yeah, and that I was, was like... Yes. That was definitely me, man. Like I was getting it, physically angry. Even thinking about it, I was like, oh, like, oh, that guy sucks. Yeah. And I it's can't just wait to like, cut his head off. Yeah, it's it's really satisfying as a DM to have something that you've kind of like created and, mm-hmm. and just made up and presented to the party get like that visceral of a reaction. It like that's when as a DM you stop worrying about like. I hope my players like are having fun or or feel invested in the game because you hear something like that and it's like no they like the players are reacting yeah. as strongly as the characters are reacting now and that's like when it really kind of like feels magical you know magical yeah. I'm gonna magical. keep using that word and get made fun of for it for good reason <laughs> but yeah yeah, yeah nice. definitely I mean as a DM I put honestly a lot of time into creating the moments and Mm -hmm. you know probably at a detriment to the story sometimes but (laughs) i'm like what would be just such a cool moment and then i'll find music that matches it and then i'm like i'll build to it and then when it happens and it lands boy you know that's that's something you chase you know that's a feeling you you chase man jared well, are you doing all right with substances it seems like you're really on edge about something man, just I, like, just, man I, just, I just gotta get i just something. can't get there again i just really oh man it's just like this just i just like i was missing at, you know was that high and now i'm just at a constant <laughs> low man yeah for people that are listening jared is scratching a hole through his neck right now yeah he's just been <laughs> digging in and not like slight itching like fully <laughs> gashing chunks it's like there's something in there that he's trying to get out <laughs> yeah you know, it's, it's like it's fun to to hear me talk about it after prefacing like my dad was afraid i'd get addicted <laughs> <laughs> yeah. he's like this is no good for you and i'm like well I'm just like sitting on your shirt there's just like an, a pentagram and you just <laughs> it's well, on fire another thing just, I was going to bring up is I think it's funny. This just shows kind of the different households that we were in. Sure. Your dad didn't like um, you playing D and D because of satanic panic stuff. Yeah. My mom in that time, at least probably wouldn't have liked me playing D and D because she didn't want me to be a nerd. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, and look at you now. I know. I know. It's a time boy shirt. It's a time Seinfeld, Seinfeld hat. hat. <laughs> Yeah, you've done well, Manny proud. always wanted me to be good at sports, and I just never wanted Dude, to. Be you're mom. telling me, bro. How do you think it is being six foot eight oh, and telling people I haven't I touched a basketball in 10 years? <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Oh, um, man. Niall, you have a question for us, right? I no. do. And so, 
<laughs> Did I not, do. What, was your question the first one? Yeah, yeah. Jared's got a question. Though. Yeah, yeah guys, <laughs> we've been talking for so long. And obviously, this is one of those topics where I could just start talking about it, talk about it for five hours and still have Talk-o things to say, it. you know, and not it's be tired of it. Pun. Sorry. Keep I want going. you to sit in this. <laughs> 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 um, yourself for 15 minutes. I want to talk about the movie that we all saw, you know, oh, and again, hey. I want it to be a little, I don't know. Spoiler free. Spoiler free. Because yeah. again, we had the luxury of seeing it so early because of our status and <laughs> this is um, yeah. Podcast. <laughs> yeah. and so i'm just interested to hear what were your thoughts um did it meet your expectations where um yeah if what what's your kind of spoiler free review yeah so i i just want to preface we know you haven't seen it but we'll make it so you can listen to this and yeah. still enjoy the movie I'm not going to give anything away. Spoiler free is going to be genuinely spoiler free. But, you know, still our thoughts, our honest thoughts, because, you know, I'll go first. I loved it. I really, <laughs> really did love it. I, um, you know, there's always a couple things with like where the humor might miss or whatever. And sure. that's just how it is in modern movies a lot of times. But overall, it does a very, very good job of capturing the fun energy of playing d d And it really does feel like, mm-hmm. hey, someone... You know, this is feels like a piece of a campaign or like a big chunk of a campaign. And all these characters, like the main characters, feel like they're, you know, making genuinely human decisions, like human is in like flawed decisions sometimes. And it's really mm-hmm. fun to watch that um, because all the none of the characters are perfect. They're all flawed and they all make mistakes, but they all, you know, try and come back from them. And the honestly, I think my favorite part about this was the fight scenes. The fight scenes were so they were cool. really fun. They were yeah. so fun and they were so <laughs> well choreographed and the magic and the sword fighting, just all that stuff was just so well executed that I I was just very enthused with how good this was. I really hope it does well so that they can make more with these characters because I really, Definitely. really love it. Yeah. I I would be happy if they made more with these characters or more that were like Dungeons and Dragons this other thing and yeah. it's like a new mm-hmm. party yeah you know? instead like, of honor among thieves yeah, it was like yeah, yeah the, just totally unrelated absolutely I'd be wizard the, school the march of the goblins of... <laughs> <laughs> the march of the goblins <laughs> whatever i don't know yeah but, um and yeah i i basically just to say different stuff because i agree with everything that you said and i just want to bring up other things yeah i was really surprised with how much of a heart this movie had uh-huh um i was kind of expecting it to just be like all right this is just going to be kind of fun Mm -hmm. and and like fun and action and silly Mm -hmm. and it (laughs) delivered on all of those things and also delivered on having like true character development and like emotional impactful moments in the movie where I was like, all right, Dungeons and Dragons, the movie. Like, yeah, let's <laughs> go. Yeah. Come on. I, I was, I go was off, really, girl. I was really impressed. <laughs> and um, like it, I, by the end of it, I cared about all of the characters. And I was like, yeah. yeah, okay. This is like, these, these characters are important to me. And uh, again, the, the action sequences were just so cool. Yeah. Like there was, yeah. there was a specific sequence with the Druid um, and, and her wild shaping abilities where I was just like, this is amazing. Yes. And I like, <laughs> it's, it's crazy to see something this chaotic, th- this so true to the game chaotic happening in this game. And yeah. just like, just narrow miss after narrow miss. Uh-huh. And like, mm-hmm. And I just like, I love that stuff. And it it felt like the way that you would imagine a sequence of playing D and D, you know, and, and there were tons of things like that, even down to there's a sequence that is in the trailer um, where he's uh, trying to kind of cut himself out of ropes yeah, while a yeah. fight is happening around him. <laughs> that was where I that was, was like, not Lee and uh, yeah, that, and uh, Gideon, my yeah, Niles characters we talked that about. Felt <laughs> so much like a thing in a campaign where it's like it gets back to your turn in combat, and the DM's like, "Okay, so you're still 
Letting yourself Bam. loose. Yeah, it's like, all right, I'm I'll come, use I'm my come. action again to try to cut myself loose. And it's like, <laughs> you don't quite make it this turn. Go through another <laughs> round of combat. It was just like that felt so much like a real D and D combat to me. And it was it was just great. There were so many things like that. Adaptations of characters, like creatures that I wanted to yeah. see that were done and done very well. And it was just it was fun. Loved it. Yeah. I mean, I I, I'm right there with you guys. What's fun is I saw your letterboxed reviews, and this yeah. is one of the few ones that we've all seen around the same time that we all gave the same sc- score, which yeah, is five uh, stars. Yeah, because I think it it not only met but exceeded a lot of those expectations, right? Mm-hmm. Like what I want out of it. Do I think there are things I could have done better? Sure, you know, absolutely. Yeah, but just yeah, but like it was so perfect for what it was trying to do, and mm-hmm. um, my favorite part is just with these kind of things, watching it kind of like with Vox Machina uh, on Amazon Prime is you just are watching it and you're like, oh, that's that spell. You know, yeah. oh, that's that. Well, he's uh, this kind of character, so he can do this. Ability. That's yeah. really cool that he did that with his, you know, mm-hmm. there's all these like moments throughout. Yeah. And I just was hoping I wanted more, you know, because yeah. it didn't yeah. feel entirely like fan service. Like you could watch it mm-hmm. and just be like, oh, yeah, that's a sick thing he can do mm-hmm. with that. Or that's cool that she can do this. Um, but if you've played D&D, there's a little bit of like, oh, I know the rule behind it. I know how it's worded. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know that yeah. that's his well, like, okay, that's I'll the say action, if, if you know? you've if you've read and meticulously poured over the handbooks, then you can have that connection. I would not say every person who's ever played D well, has that ability. No, yeah, yeah, that's true. I mean, for me, I've I've played, I think, all of the types of characters that they are. And yeah. so yeah. <laughs> I've just played it enough that I'm like, oh yeah. That, yeah. That makes well, sense. and it was like sense. there was even a moment where it, like it was a joke that played for everyone, but especially played if you just understand the basic ways that the stat blocks for each of those kinds of characters would be built mm-hmm. where like, oh yeah, there's no one in this party that's like intelligence driven. <laughs> <laughs> like, there, there are no, there are no classes no... in the party. That oh, yeah, high yeah, 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 high high intelligence. There was kind I of do. like a joke that, so that was made about that. That was funny by itself. But especially if you like understand uh-huh. the the way yeah. that those characters are built, it's especially like, yeah, no, that's way funny. That's right? totally so, how it would be. Yeah. Yeah. I, I did love that a lot. Yeah. I mean, yeah, there's so much. Like the, the script was great. I think the the two other things I will say that I really loved is one, I, I read some reviews and it's getting mixed, you know, like reviews just about its pacing because uh-huh. there's so much backstory that they put in. Yeah, like that, exposition but that's D. yeah you know that's I mean? totally yeah every, every, I love every character in the party has a backstory that they came to the yeah, table with they're and all each the one character. got a, a spotlight on it uh-huh. yeah exactly everyone in the party is a main character it's not just chris pine who's mm-hmm. the poster I, I, child I love, and yeah. the leader you know it like there it was, felt no. so great that way um and I even totally like agree. the villain villains were super fun and interesting like mm-hmm. interesting enough and she was so intense and it was awesome <laughs> yeah it's and like, there, no. there was like a, a character at one point that was like oh this is like the character that the dm is playing as like yeah he, or like the, yeah like guest character yeah type. guest character yeah. yeah or whatever and it was just yeah. like it was so cool i i loved so much of it 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 really did feel like you were playing D in the in the best way mm-hmm. and you know, there's some really silly, goofy stuff that happens in it too, which I love because that's typically how most D&D games are played. It's just, you know, yeah. it's fun and silly like we were saying. Yeah, I mean, the backdrop is like, oh no, the story is pretty intense if you think yeah. about it, yeah. but the characters are just right. having fun. Just mm-hmm. having a good time. Yeah, yeah so yeah. the tone, it just, tone was perfect. It didn't yep. feel yeah. like when it was the villain scene, it was so gritty and dark yeah. and horrible, like uh, gore. Right, Gore, the oh, God Butcher, yeah, the God yeah. Butcher yeah. from from Thor, Love and Thor. Thunder, right. and like Thor, it felt Thor. like it just kept flipping back and forth between the heroes who were goofy and gaggy, and then like the villain and, who's and then super this insanely serious, insanely dark villain. Yeah, yeah, this one just perfectly found like that that line, and you know, yeah, it was it was really fun. I, I found myself yeah. laughing a lot, and so yeah, too. really a great. Um, one. <laughs> my invitation to the listeners is. Once you see this movie, if you <laughs> like the movie and you like the tone of it and you like how it feels, maybe consider trying to play D&D. 
yeah. because this game or this movie feels so much like D and D that if you like the movie, I feel like there's quite a high chance that you will also like playing the game. You know, mm-hmm. it's one of yeah, those and- movies. Good book was better. Yeah, um. <laughs> I, <laughs> I'll, I'll say as well, like if you've not played D&D, but you're just listening because you are curious about it as well. Mm-hmm. Chances are, you know, one of us because no one else listens to this podcast. <laughs> so, you know, so if you want to play, we're always down to play. So yeah. it would be fun to do. Uh, you know, I'm always down to play. And I've said that yeah. before. Conflicts. and not. Yeah, let me know. let me also just plug really quick the and it's not really a plug, but um D and D, like I said, can take a ton of time. Sure, mm-hmm. but there's also things people just call one shots, right? Mm-hmm. These are one and done, like a game night, basically, where you just play D and D, and you can like just grab a couple characters that are pre-made. You know, sometimes your DM mm-hmm. is usually the one who sets it up. But I've had games where I just had characters already made. I said, just pick which one you think would be the most fun, and we mm-hmm. just had a blast right you don't have to really like dive into your backstory and get super into role play if you're not super comfortable starting out but you can get like a oh i'm a i'm a fighter character i have a sword and a bow cool i i could figure out how to do that yeah <laughs> uh yeah. and so yeah just it doesn't have to be overwhelming and like a huge commitment i just want that's kind of the point i'm trying mm-hmm. to make is yep yeah for sure just try it one time and just to and a, honestly, do a short story yeah, reach out to one of us and be like, hey, can you run a one shot for me? <laughs> like yeah. pro- chances are we'll find a place in our schedule to do it. Yeah. This is this is one of those like I have some hobbies where I'm like, yeah, I'll get to it when I get to it. Yeah. But if somebody reaches out to me and is genuinely like, hey, will you do a one shot for me? I'm like, I will clear like like <laughs> responsibilities <say> <laughs> that I have. To, I will take off work. <laughs> yeah, because I love it. So yeah, yeah. I, I hope if nothing else during this episode, you can see, hear just like a little bit of passion from us. Like this is something <laughs> we've spent a lot of time or I guess various times doing, but we've all had such a positive experience and uh we 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 would love to share that hobby with anyone. And so I mean thank you for taking the time to listen to us. Uh, ramble for an hour about (laughs) Dungeons and Dragons Um, and hopefully you get a chance to see the movie here soon Uh, it truly was magical and hopefully theaters March 31st I wish we could say brought to you by the Dungeons and Dragons movie that would be so cool (laughs) maybe maybe they'll reach out after this they'll be like hey guys here's some money hey Chris Pine here yeah hey hey Chris Pine here did you guys have that at the beginning of the movie where the cast sits yeah that that's the worst part of the movie I'm always like come on oh I I actually I didn't I I got there a little bit a little bit late because I was like you know what with you know with credits and stuff Mm -hmm. or like the but they didn't have any trailers that I I mean like that I saw I was like 10 minutes late oh yeah huh and it had already started oh really yeah, but uh, it was so early on that I was like, yeah, I'm yeah. sure I missed nothing. Yeah, I, yeah. yeah. So. Um, the yeah, basically, at least uh, if you've seen movies in theaters recently, sometimes they'll do a tag yeah. with the cast where it's like, you guys, come on, theaters. Am I right? Theaters. And it's movie like theaters. you're preaching it's like, to the choir already. Like, yeah, we you're are telling the came. wrong people. Like, we get that you <laughs> Whoa, love people see movies in theaters. Passionate and about this. <laughs> I it drives me crazy. Okay. It's like when you go to a class and there are a lot of people late and the professor is like, wow, where is everybody? And it's like, I don't know. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. just like. You're asking the wrong people. Yeah. yeah. Send out Do an a email. TV ad. Yeah. <laughs> Put yeah, it but otherwise cable. it's great. That that doesn't affect the quality of the movie at yeah, all. That sure. was just something that I was like, well, I'm glad I missed but... it. Yeah, you guys are <laughs> coming in hot. Dude, and they, well, they just it's do just... it with so many movies. Because so many Since movies COVID, do it. Yeah, they're just everything. like, please come to the theaters, but they're telling the people that are at the theaters. Yeah. It's a total waste of budget for them yeah. to film those. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because anyway, no great game, great TV show, even animated TV show. Great movie. If you're apprehensive. Go watch the movie. Yeah, Vox yeah. Machina. That's a DD show. We oh, didn't talk about gotcha. it much. Go watch The Legend of Vox Machina. Yeah. Uh, yes. It's a little adult, so just be yeah. warned. But 
Um, don't watch with your kids, probably. The the, the movie is totally family friendly, though. Movie Super is family, family friendly. friendly. And if you've never played the game and you're like, oh, I don't know, watch the movie. You'll love it, even if you haven't played the game at all. That's and then play the game and then do play the game because it's fun yeah. and we love it. Also, I mean, again, I've kind of pl- I've said these podcasts before, uh, but Critical Role, uh, Dimension Twenty, The Adventure Zone, like there's so much D and D content out there right now that like. Yeah. Even if you're just scared, I don't know the rules. I don't know what it'd look like even, like actual yeah. play. Just look up one of those three groups. Mm-hmm. Uh, they just have such a blast. And yeah, yeah it's I, I can fun storytelling. quite confidently say that Critical Role Campaign 2 is mm-hmm. my favorite media that I've ever consumed, <laughs> I think. It's very good. Whoa. I just got so involved with it. And yeah, so with, that could be its own episode, except it won't be because it would require Lucas to watch over 500 hours of content. <laughs> well, it might be once we get a mighty nine show. Yeah, so, absolutely. But until then, we'll catch you on another man cave movie night Monday. <laughs>